gracious and loving God, for the beauty of the sunrise, Lord, we are thankful, Lord, for another day that we can come together as a church family, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. So this morning, Lord, anoint, Lord, our hearts, our minds, our eyes, Lord, to focus upon you, to focus upon the cross of Jesus Christ. Today, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to continue this journey in the season of Lent. May your spirit enrich us. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. And together, God's people say, Amen. been nice and they've all been really nice. The Bible study that Pastor Mike has been doing with us is the miracles of Jesus and the next one will be on Monday, March 22nd. So come and join us. Palm Sunday. We still can't gather for our Palm Sunday tea, so we're going to have grab and go drinks and donuts on on um, Palm Sunday. So on your way out the door, you can take us in. And there's our schedule of jobs for the month. And our junior church schedule. Bill is there today, but again, there, it's not ready for you to teach, Bill, so you're good. Sunday school at the church for all ages. Um, check us out on AllisonChristianChurch.org on Facebook and YouTube. Last week's scripture memory verse from 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1.18 this week's scripture memory verse, also from 1 Corinthians, it's 131. That, that as it is written, he the glory is let him in glory in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 131. We, Chuck and I, are the prayer family of the week, so we thank you in advance for your prayers. Are there any other announcements this morning? So I hand about the um, Easter flower order form if anybody didn't get one didn't get one out to church. We have a couple weeks to get them in. Yeah. If you need order forms for um, flowers, see Susan. Okay? That's it. Okay, would you please stand for the call of worship? 
call to worship this morning is a, a responsive reading. Your part is, you are our shepherd and we don't need a thing. God, sometimes the days are long, the nights are even longer, and we're so tired. And then you soothe us and bring us to gentle places. You are our shepherd, shepherd and we, we don't, don't need a thing. Sometimes life is moving too fast and we can't find a moment to breathe. And then you surround us with stillness and bring an even rhythm to our breath. You are our shepherd and we don't need to breathe. Sometimes we're parched and it seems nothing will quench our thirst. We're famished and we can't find anything to eat. And then you refresh us and fill us. You are our shepherd and we don't need a thing. Sometimes the valley is dark and the shadows are heavy and we're afraid. But then we feel your strength and we have courage. You are a shepherd and we don't need a thing. There are times when it seems we're up against the world, but we will praise you and dwell with you forever. You are a shepherd and we don't need a thing. Our opening song this morning is How Great Is Our God.
we can. We gather in awe of your vision that is broad and vast. Be with us now as we worship you. Awaken us to your holiness. Inspire us with your creative power. And peel back our layers of anxiety and fear. Enlighten us to trust fully in your love for us as we struggle and strive to be who you call us to be. In Christ's holy name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God sees all things. He sees our comings and our goings, our strengths and our weaknesses, our needs and our desires. God sees in us the potential we do not yet see in ourselves. I invite you to share your offerings and gifts out of the abundance that is God's vision for us. Please stand. Praise God. So this morning, once again, we come to this abundant feast, 
In my own words, indeed, it is an abundant feast. Because it is a feast that the Lord Jesus Christ has prepared for each and every one of us, to those who will come to this table and truly remember his great sacrifice. So once again, let us come to this table of love. Let's come and remember what Jesus Christ has done for all of us. Let's join together in our hymn of communion. Amazing grace, my chains are gone.
And Jesus took the bread, and when he had broken it, he gave thanks and offered it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this whenever you eat of it in remembrance of me. And also in that upper room, Jesus took the cup, he gave thanks and blessed it, and given it to his disciples, saying, This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. that is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Drink and remember. This morning, we like to welcome those, and uh, just reminded all those who view us by Facebook, um, hearing that we're getting hundreds of viewers that are watching in this tiny little church here. And, um, but so we kind of want to say to all of you, if you um, are local and uh, you need any uh, assistance or help, uh, we ask you to message us with your address and your name and. Uh, your phone number so we can reach out to you and help you um, and be able to share the love of God. So um, anybody at this time in the church want to pray or care? I have some praises. First of all, I just want to praise Nancy again for the music. She just, the Holy Spirit just tells her when to hold the music and you're sitting back here and it's just a beautiful, beautiful sound and everything. We are, this little church is blessed above and beyond. Amen. Let's give, the, give God um, praise for that. Amen. And this is a joy. Nancy and I always talk about our grandchildren being away. Well, the joy is when your adult granddaughter calls and says, are you going to be home? And then she comes walking in. They know, no knocking on the door, just walk in. Right in. And Lindsay came and brought her pup. And God bless the pup. He didn't want to go. He, she literally had to drag him with his leash across the hardwood floors and she stood him up and he went right back down i said he's just like you and your sister when you were baby you didn't want to go and uh it's joy and in this, in this world of COVID, we need joy yes, we Amen. well said well said indeed we do need a lot of joy and uh can get the best of us and uh how about the sunshine we've been having this day you should feel good uh Went to the doctor see uh, the other day, and uh, doctors always ask you these questions. How you doing? So well, probably like everybody else, a little down and uh, you know depressed a little bit because it's been gloomy and having to wear a mask everywhere you go. It just kind of breathing your own breath in out for a while. It just you know gets pretty bad, you know. <laughs> so um, and to be able to uh, you know see the sunshine, um, to be able to see that light and feel you know a little warm just does everybody good. And, and she says, yeah, a lot of people have been saying the same thing. So we're not alone. And as you've heard that saying, we're all in this together. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else this morning? Nance. Yes, um, I'm going in Thursday to have a CT scan. So okay. I'm just afraid that it turns out okay. Absolutely. We'll keep you in our prayers. Trish. Uh, Delaney suffered a concussion in gym class. And she used to see a specialist this week and has been suffering a lot of bad headaches. Let's indeed uh, keep her in our prayers. Anyone else this morning? Lana? Um, I have a couple unspoken. And also, um, we did keep Nolan in prayer. He was feeling in the middle of the night last night. He came in. He was feeling unsettled, uneasy. Absolutely. Okay. Stephanie? Yeah, um, this week is, is little EJ's last five-day chemo. 
uh, before they can do a PET scan to see what comes next. So okay. keeping Jay and his family. Absolutely. Anyone else this morning like left on her, please? Our neighbor um, has a new granddaughter and they're having problems with baby. His name is Willow. I'm just asking for prayer for her. She's still in ICU and they had to do it really long ago. <coughs> um, they believe she has Downs. Let's uh, keep her in the family and prayer. Absolutely. Be praying for Willow and we'll ensure we keep her on our prayer list. And anyone else this morning left to lift up in our prayers? All right, would you please join with me this morning? And those of you who also are watching us and or will watch us, we do have you in our prayers. So, knowing today that God not only hears our prayers, but He answers our prayers. Amen. Amen. So, let's uh, bow our heads before the Lord today and let's thank Him this morning for all of the things. Our gracious and loving Father, it is with great joy we come once again to the throne room of grace and mercy in the time of need. And we ask God that as we bow our heads before you this morning, Lord, that you would just minister to each and every person of the Lord today. As we take just a little bit of time just to focus upon who you are and to be grateful for the many blessings that surround our lives. We have our family, we have our health. We have a, a place where we can congregate together and fellowship and to worship you. On a Sunday morning, a beautiful day like this, to be able to sing praises to our great God. So this day, Lord, we, we count it a blessing, a privilege, an honor to be able to come before the throne room of grace and mercy in our times of need. And whether we don't have the need that we're carrying, we're here to pray. For our and so today we continue to lift up our country, the United States of America, Lord, our president, Lord, and all those who serve this great nation. That Lord, even though none of us are perfect, Lord, we all fall short of your glory and your honor. We pray, Lord, that your spirit would move upon our nation, and Lord, your word would prevail, your truth would prevail, and people will come to you, to the cross. Lord, in these days that we're living in, Lord, especially now, Lord, we need more of you in our, in our country. Lord, we ask that you would be with our military men and women that serve this great nation, that are home and abroad, and we thank you for their sacrifices. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the men and women who have laid down their lives, for the freedoms that we possess. Lord, we continue to lift up Nolan, Lord, and um, as uh, a member of this church, we pray for him, Lord, and that you would just grant him peace. Lord, whatever is un unsettling him, we ask, God, that you would just bind him together with the cords of your love and give him peace, Lord, that passes all understanding. Lord, we pray this morning, Lord, for Sister Nancy as she's going for a CT scan. We ask God that, Lord, that you will just grant her a good report. Lord, allow her just to, to wait upon the shadow, under the shadow of you, the Almighty. Lord, we lift up the lady this morning, God, as she's had a recent concussion. And we ask God that you would just uh, put your hand of healing upon her head. And Lord, just let everything be all right with her. Father, today, we lift up EJ, who's been going through a lot of treatments, cancer treatments. And Lord, we just continue to lift him up and his family as well. And Father, Lord, he'll come through this. Lord, our prayers go out for him and Lord, all those who, who love him. Lord, we're lifting up this, this little girl by the name of Willa, who's in ICU, who's so baby. We ask God that you would just be with her and strengthen her, oh God. Lord, as this innocent child lays there, we just pray for peace upon uh, mom and dad. Today, Lord, as we gather together in this house of worship, Lord, there are many people also that will view this at a latter time, some that may be watching it this very morning. And we pray, God, that you will just allow, God, your peace to fall upon all of them. This we pray in Jesus' name, and together God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen. Praise God. I'm just going to turn off the microphone and just use the, the pulpit mic to see some interference. 
But anyways, let's have our Bibles open this morning to the Gospel of Matthew, and welcome all of you that are watching us to uh, also open up your Bibles to the book of Matthew this morning, Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 27, and the message this morning is take up your cross and follow him, follow Jesus. Let's look at the scriptures this morning in chapter 16, verses 21 and following. It says, From this time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he, being Jesus, turned and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Jesus says, Take up the cross and follow him. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Let us all read verse 27 together. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his word. Somewhere along the line, the cross has become an icon for Christianity. You see here is a cross that's been placed upon my desk. It says, God bless you, Pastor. Um, typically at this time, we'll probably get our wooden cross up here. We have a cross behind the screen. We have a cross on the altar. Many of you may be wearing crosses here uh, this morning. And of course, it has become an icon for Christians all over the world is our trademark, if you will. And we probably could claim a lot of others, but the cross is the one that is most identified with us as disciples of Christ. Identity, though, is a funny thing in this culture. We are usually careful about who or what we identify ourselves with. And we're willing to pay a lot to identify in our society, whether it's designer wear, whether it's a sports team, a racing team, whatever, you name it, we try to identify well, whether we're buying their merchandise, uh, we're idolizing something, we're identifying with something. You know, sports, for example, for many of us as men, um, we're loyal to a team even when they're losing, just like the Pittsburgh Pirates, you know, that lost for many years. But then they have their, their good years and, of course, probably many more of their bad years. But for those who are sports fans or whatever fan you are, you become loyal to that team and you support that team win or lose. Yet with the cross of Jesus, though it's never had a losing track or a losing track record, it is undefeated. And aren't you thankful for that today? Amen. And so yet, though, Many people still struggle with identifying with it because it feels like a loss at times in our lives. It feels like maybe we are not in first place many times. We're taking a second place, a third place. And so the question is, are we losing? Are we coming in second place? Or is there a bigger picture at work? Take up your cross as you heard Jesus in his words to his disciples. It's found in a couple passages of scripture throughout the New Testament in Matthew's gospel, Mark's, also in Luke's gospel. And the question is, what is Jesus teaching? What is he saying by these words, take up? In definition, the word <coughs> take up is to take and to apply to any use to become interested or engaged in a pursuit of something or someone. The next thing that Jesus says is deny self. To deny self, 
to affirm one has no acquaintance or connection, to forget oneself, to lose sight of oneself and one's own self-interest. And Jesus also makes the statement in this particular message to follow. And the word follow is one who proceeds to join him or it, accompany him or it, to join one as a disciple, to become or be his or her disciple, to side with his or her party. Jesus teaches us that we must become acquainted with the instrument of his death to find our own life. And oftentimes we as Christians have a hard time identifying with the cross. And so looking for life is the loss of it. Looking for life is the loss of it. Losing it for the master's sake, that is Jesus, is finding the very thing that you and I and every soul on this earth should be looking for. Two ironies to this is, the first one is the way of the cross is the way of death. It was a terrible, terrible death for our Lord and Savior. And of course, the cross was never meant to be a pretty symbol, but it symbolizes hurt, it symbolizes pain. Roman deaths were very terrible. And once you were associated with the cross, the end was clear, it was death. But modern days, we've beautified it into a symbol of gold, into a symbol of comfort. It's polished. Maybe in today's times, the cross would be something more modern, the electric chair, lethal injection, the gas chamber, or firing squad. But those things were not available at that particular time that the Lord Jesus walked the face of this earth. So why the cross? They, the disciples, and every other person who has decided to follow Jesus has to struggle with this one. And we saw in the story we just read the Apostle Peter. Now, it's not in our overhead, but if we go back a few passages, if you have your Bibles, where Jesus said to his followers, who do men say that the Son of Man is? And of course, the disciples said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? And quickly, who responds? Peter. And Peter answers and says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But now not too far ahead, Jesus is about to rebuke Peter. And Peter, in his love for Jesus, his love for the Master, the one he is following, the one he just proclaimed as the Son of the living God, thinks he says the right thing. As Jesus tells his disciples that he is preparing for his death. And Peter says, no, Lord, far be it from you, this shall not happen to you. And quickly, Jesus says these words, say it with me, get me my me, Satan. Oh, what a shock. What did I do, Lord? I'm sorry, what do you mean by that, get behind me, Satan? And all of us, somehow, some way, face the same problem. <clears throat> We're looking out for the good of someone, yet maybe missing the spiritual message. What is it saying? There was another possible follower that was asked to go and sell all that he had and to take up his cross and to follow Jesus. But the story was that he couldn't do that, and he went away what? He went away sad. And so the cross has seemed to, been seen to be seen by many people as a place of death. Therefore, it cuts against each and every one of us having to carry one. And as well it does to this very day. When you see it for what it really is, 
You feel its weight from time to time. Let's pause a moment this morning. As we're thinking about the cross that Jesus carried, you sense that it's there. It rubs against your shoulder. It cuts into your will. It presses into your lifestyle. It starts cutting off the blood flow to the old way of doing things. It's changing you. You feel it. It rubs against you. It cuts into your will. Jesus' death was abnormal for a cross quicker than supposed to be. Maybe possibly showing us that the quicker we go through the way of death in this flesh, the better that we will live in the spirit. Can the church say amen to that? Amen. Not only does the cross speak of death, but the cross is meant to symbolize a way of living, a way of living a different lifestyle. And of course, that mindset was in Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus came with the full intention of dying on the cross. Even though Peter made the proclamation that he was the son of the living God, the very Christ, the anointed one, and he would do anything to protect his master. He would do anything. Far be it from us, Lord, that's not going to happen to you. But at that moment, Jesus rebuked him and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God. You see, Jesus came with the full intention of dying on that old rugged cross. Jesus said we are to embrace it. If we look back to Matthew's gospel in 16, chapter 16, verses 24, Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, let him take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will do what, church? Will lose it. But whoever loses his life for whose sake? Jesus' sake, guess what? Will what? Find it. There it is. For what does it profit a man if he will gain the whole world? What good is it for any person in this world to gain all the material wealth, all of the power, the prestige, all of these things, and to forfeit one's very own soul <clears throat> to an eternal separation from the Creator. What good does anyone see in that? Yet, there is a world of people that still will choose the broad and path. There is a way that seems right unto a man, the Bible says, but the end thereof is death. Narrow is the way to eternal life, and few will go there, but broad is the way to destruction, and many will go. There's an old saying, everybody wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. Isn't that true? Everybody wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. But at the cross, Jesus, the Son of Man, was fully dead. What do I mean by that? His flesh, his humanity, but yet, Jesus, the Son of God, was fully alive, spirit and divine. The moment he took his last breath, he gave up the ghost. Is the moment that most people believe, and it comes from the book of Ephesians and 1 Peter, where he led captivity free. He went down into the lower parts of the earth and preached the gospel and set people free from the old times, the Old Testament. So the cross is meant to be a place where the flesh dies so that the spirit might live. The place where things in the way die. Let me ask you a question this morning to all of us and those viewing. Is there something in the way that must die <clears throat> in your own life? The young ruler obeyed all of the commandments 
And yet Jesus saw with inside of him, he said, yet one thing you lack. He was a very rich man. And he asked him, he says, go and sell all that you have and come and follow me. And you will have riches in heaven. And the story was that he went away sad. Now look at that picture, would you please? There is Jesus, there is the rich young ruler. And yet, who do you see behind these two? You see the many disciples intrigued. What will he say? What will he do? What choice will he make? And maybe there are people today that are at the crossroads, at the testing ground, the same as this man was, is still the same men and women today that have to make that choice. And that is the free choice that our Creator has given His creation. But with a cost, yes. To take up your cross, to deny self, and say it with me, to follow Jesus. You see, so each place we find the phrase being taught, there is a challenge. First, with Simon Peter, Jesus goes on to say, as I just got done saying it, if anyone will come after me, deny self, take up his cross, and follow him. He's recorded also saying, whoever will be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father. The third scenario is telling the young men, as we just viewed, how hard is it for those that have much to enter into the kingdom of God? How hard is it for them that trust in riches? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because we are trusting and holding on to that which will never sustain us. It will never gratify enough. How much is enough? And that's why Jesus said those words. And like the others with Simon Peter, coupled with the settings of his teachings, it's the things of life, society, the comforts of the flesh that will hinder us from obeying the cross. Take it up, carry it. The cross is to be carried, not prayed about, not fasted for over 20 years, but to be carried. You see, the cross is not the hard times of life, the things that happen to us when the bills aren't paid, or you lose a job, or you have a surprise child that comes. That is not your cross. Even though we make those statements, I guess this is the cross that I must bear. Get this, if you don't volunteer for it, it can't be your cross. Jesus, Jesus freely took up that cross to take the sins of the world, your sins, my sins, upon him so that we could be set free, so that we could once again have a relationship with a holy God. But our cross is when you have to make a decision to carry it in spite of its weight, in spite of its discomfort. Or lay it down until it becomes more accommodating for your life. Hmm. Food for thought this morning. And so in closing, there's a story that I read. It's called The Crossroom. The young man was at the end of his rope, seeing no way out. He dropped to his knees in prayer and said, Lord, I can't go on. I have too heavy a cross to bear. And the Lord replied, my son, if you can't bear its weight, just place your cross inside this room. Then open that other door and pick out any cross that you wish. See all those crosses, it's amazing, huh? And so the young man was filled with relief. 
Thank you, Lord, he sighed, and he did what he was told. And upon entering the other door, he saw many other crosses, some, some so large that the tops weren't even visible. And then he spotted a tiny little cross leaning against the far wall. And he said to the Lord, I like that one, Lord, that little bitty one. And so then the Lord whispered back to him and said, my son, that is the cross that you just brought in. You see that wee little bitty cross up there? Right up there? <coughs> Let's bow our heads today. There's a song we're about to sing. It's a very traditional song during this time of the year. It's the old rugged cross. Within those words, it says it's an emblem of suffering and shame. It talks about laying down our trophies. Father, as we prepare ourselves to sing this last hymn, I pray, God, Lord, as we have heard your teachings this morning about taking up our cross, denying ourselves, following you, that yet another one hears your words and will leave all to follow you, because they see that this world does not have the answer or the solution, but the answer is hidden in the cross, an emblem of suffering and shame. You bore that cross for each and every one of us. But you also called us to deny ourselves. The rich young ruler could not do that. And yet, Lord, thousands and thousands and thousands yet still face that same cross for them. And I pray today, Lord, there will be one more right now, this morning, that will say yes to the cross and no to the Lord. And so I pray your Holy Spirit would move this morning upon each and every one of us to fully understand what it means to embrace the cross, to deny self, and to truly, truly follow the Master. We pray, God, now as you have moved upon the hearts of us all, Lord, we can gladly sing this song together as one body. In Jesus' name we pray. Together, God's people say, Amen. Let's stand in the house of the Lord and let's sing this favorite old hymn, The Old Rugged Cross. <laughs>
as we leave this place today, Lord, we leave together in such a remembrance of what we are to identify with and to whom. So once again this morning, Lord, we thank you as we are in the season of Lent to remember for this purpose you came to this earth to lay down your life to die in our place and so we will indeed cherish this old mighty cross and last one day Lord we will lay down our trophies all of the things that we fought for gain and I pray this morning Lord that each and every one of us will truly once again hear your words in order to follow you is to deny sin, take up our cross, and surely be a follower of Jesus Christ. We pray, God, that you would walk each and every moment with us until we meet you face to face. This we pray in Jesus' name, together with God's people say. Amen. 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 Let's give God praise today. God bless you and have a wonderful day.